For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday morning, July the 7th, 1996. Final service of the summer family camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Chuck Worth of Bella Vista, California, is the speaker of the morning. Joseph was separated from seven things in his life, and I, I'm not teaching that. That's not my subject. But one of the things he was after, he's pushed out of the land of the Ur of the Chaldees, Abraham, I'm sorry, yeah, Abraham, that he was separated from his kindred. Joseph, I'm going to him next. And in Joseph, we see that Joseph had three strippings, one by his brothers, and they put him in a pit, one by a harlot system that took his garment off of him. But then the last stripping is when God took the prison garments off and sent him to his brothers and to the nations. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to start, I, I guess I've started every service with uh, Revelation 21, so why be any different? And I'm just going to read this again just uh, to get a context. Today I'd like to just, I'd like to take Genesis 24 and go over it word by word, verse by verse. But I want to tell you what it's all about, and, and I'm sure many of you know. But, but I'm going to, going to look at the bride... But I'm also going to show you the, the old faithful servant that brings the bride to her husband. So it's good to be a bride, but how many of you know that the bride has got to have an old, good, confident, faithful servant that's going to lead her to her husband? Uh, in, in Revelation 21, just verse 2, I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, and folks, that's the third heaven. That's the spirits of just men made perfect, it says in Hebrews 12. We looked at that last night. And this city's coming down out of heaven, but, but this bride is prepared and adorned. And, and we need to see how she's prepared, what she looks like when she is prepared, and who has an influence on her life to prepare. But she's adorned for her husband. I want to go to verse 9 in this same Chapter, and there came unto me one of the seven angels, seven messengers, which had the seven vials full of seven plagues. They talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's, the lamb's wife. Now, now, I'm not going to tie that all together, but that's a key of what's in that verse before he shows the, the bride, the lamb's wife. But, and he carried me, verse 10, he carried me away in the spirit. It's so important that you understand spiritual things. He carried me. It's the only way you can, you can see the bride, and it's the only way you can be the bride is by the Spirit. God said, I am a spirit, and they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And he carried me away in the Spirit into a great and high mountain, and he showed me a great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven, from God, this city, which is a people, is descending to the earth. Now I want to go to uh, to Galatians four, and we went there last night, but I want to go there again just very briefly. In verse twenty-one, Galatians four twenty-one, and it says, "Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, and there's two sons in the earth today. There's two." Men in the earth today, and you're one of the two. You're either of the first Adam or you're of the second Adam. The first Adam is earthly. He's of the earth. The second Adam is the, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's of the heavens. And you're, you're one place or the other. And one by a bond made, the other by a, bond, a free woman. But he was of the bond woman, was born after the flesh. The earth man is of the flesh. Now, the flesh is the son Ishmael, and that son is of the flesh, and that is the, the mark of the beast is on the earth man. 
Ishmael was a product of Sarah's mind and Abraham's loins. She was a product of the mind and the flesh, the carnal mind and the carnal flesh that is going to help God out. And that is the mark of the beast. And if you're in the earth and earthy, there is a mark on you. And I'm not concerned about the mark that is on me from the earth. I'm concerned about getting the mark that is not earthy. I'm, I'm concerned about getting the mark from heaven. We're going to see that the bride does that, okay? Turn with me to... Well, while we're right here, just look down in verse 28 of Galatians 4. Now, we brethren as who? Isaac. Okay, this, this is going to be a story about a bride for Isaac. And I'm going to show you that Isaac is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, turn with me to Romans 8, verse... Uh, I'm sorry, it uh, should be Romans 9, verse 4. And it starts out with a question, who are Israelites? I can tell you who an Israelite. He is one that has been obedient to the covenant of the Lord. It, it talks about it, I believe it's in Galatians 6. The Israel of God is the new creation. It's the new creature is the Israel of God. And so a question is asked here, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers, and of whom is, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is all over all God blessed forever? Verse 6, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither, listen to this, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. In Isaac. Isaac is a product of promise. God promised in Abraham, we see the God of promise because God promised Abraham a son. And Abraham and Sarah tried to help him out with Hagar, and it didn't work. It was a, it was a, a wild man. The Bible calls him worse than that, okay? But verse 8, that is, he goes on to explain this in Isaac, okay? That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. There's a a whole host of the body of Christ that believes that the natural Israel are the children of God. And I'll tell you, they can be if they come by way of promise. If they do not come by promise, they are not. They are earthy and of the earth. But the children of promise are counted for the seed. So that's just a, the foundation to go to Genesis 24. And I don't plan on taking a whole lot of time, but this chapter has 67 verses in it. And I'm just going to, if you just follow with me in Genesis 24, I'm going to start with verse 1, okay? Father, I just thank you for your word. Father, I just ask by the Spirit that you minister the word which is life to this people. And that, Father, it will cause old things to fall off and new things to be born and birthed. And that, Father, it'll be a process of the adorning of the bride and the preparation that is necessary to come to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm just going to say, Isaac, I'm just going to talk about Isaac, because this, this really is not about Isaac. It's about the bride or the people that are going to be brought to him. But in Isaac, he was named before he was born, as was the Son of God. His sur supernatural birth was predicted as was Christ. He's the only son offered by his father as Jesus. His bride was selected by the father. How many know the father is selecting the bride for his son right now? And that's why we're here, I hope. Okay, in Genesis 24, 1, Abraham was old. That means it's the end of an age. How many know that it's getting old. The law is getting old and about to fade away. So it, this is in his old age. It's the end of an age. And it's well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant. This is the eldest servant of his house. And this servant ruled over all that he had. Put, I pray thee, he said, Thy hand under my thigh. Now, I'm going to show you who this servant is. Keep your finger there. We're coming right back. We go to Genesis 
I believe it's 15. Yes. Genesis 15. And I'm just verse 1. I'm just going to read the first two verses. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And boy, that was quite a thing for him to give to, to Abram. But what did Abram say? Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? He wanted a son. He wanted a son. The desire of the heart of the church must be to see the son, the body of Christ, birthed in the earth. And Abraham said, I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. So back here, and let's go back to Genesis 24. This is Eliezer, or Elzer, however you want to pronounce it. But that word means uh, to be a helper. And it's, it's likened unto the Holy Ghost, to the Holy Spirit. But it's, how do you know that it's really talking about a five-fold ministry that's energized by the Holy Spirit? It's the five-fold ministry that Jesus sent into the earth for what? To perfect the church. Do you all understand that? In Ephesians 4, 7, he gave the... Keep your finger. Let's look at it. You're not agreeing with me quick enough or something. I just I want to make sure you understand what the fivefold ministry is for. These are called the ascension gifts. Now, many think they're no longer in the earth. If they're no longer in the earth, then the church must be perfected. I don't see that. And the reason the church isn't perfected is because they're not received in the earth. Verse 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what reason? For the perfecting of the saints. Why? So that the saints can do the work of the ministry. So the saints can bring the rest of the church into the body of Christ. We've got to understand that heaven is threefold. There's three levels of people in the earth. There is the dust. Abraham's seed is as the dust, Abraham's seed is as the sand, and Abraham's seed is as the stars. Okay? We need to understand that. Okay, back to uh, Genesis 24. And, and we understand that, that these fivefold ministries must be ruler of all that God has. Now, I'll tell you right now, I'm not ruler of all that God has. In fact, the more that he makes me ruler of, the more he shows me he's ha he has and I see that I have less than what I started with because he keeps expanding. But, but it's, it's going to be in the fivefold ministry and in the body of Christ for whatever you need. And if I don't have it, Brother Glenn's going to have it or somebody else is going to have exactly what you need. And that's why the new wine, the grapes, are found in the cluster. In the cluster. It's a corporate body and we need one another. There'll be no lone rangers in this kingdom. Okay, and he ruled over all that he had. He said, I pray thee, put my hand under my thigh. That means authority. It means he comes under submission to the master. Verse 3 said, I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife. Now, here he's given instruction to Eliezer, to the servant. Don't bring a wife unto my son of the daughter of the Canaanites. Now, I tell you, there are a lot of Canaanites that believe they're going to be the bride of Christ. And the reason they don't know they're not is that there's been no fivefold ministry to tell them. And those that would gladly go and tell them, they won't let them in the door. Now, a Canaanite woman, the Canaanite word means lowlander. But the Canaanites were traffickers and their merchandisers. And boy, you see that in the church. Jesus went in and clean, cleansed the temple. And he didn't come in and say, may I come in? He went in and cleansed it. Now, he's doing it again, but he's, this time the temple is a spiritual temple and it's a people. And there is a people that he's cleansing from these things that pertain to the Canaanite. Now, there's a lot of ites. And all of them have to be cleansed out of you, okay? This is just one of them. Verse 4, But thou shalt go into my country, into my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again into the land from whence thou came? Now, there are a lot of people waiting for Jesus to return again 
And then they believe he's going to do another work of grace. I mean, no, that's a lie. I mean, no, that's a lie. Okay. Jesus will not return until the Son is birthed in the earth. I, I'm feeling shockwaves. Jesus will not return until the Son is birthed in the earth. You say, I don't believe that. Well, turn with me to, I'm going to try 1 Corinthians. If that isn't it, I'll find it. Joseph and Benjamin are part of it, yes. That's not what I want. Try Hebrews. Try Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. And I'm, I'm not going to go into it in any depth. But verse 12 says, But this man, speaking of Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice, one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, and he's henceforth expecting or waiting until what? Till his enemies be made his footstool. That's in the earth. Uh, Isaiah 66 says, Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. So he's waiting for the enemies to be made his footstool in the earth. What's the last enemy to be overcome? Death. And he goes on to say that, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are what? He's waiting for a people to become sanctified by the washing of the water of the word of Ephesians 5. Now, do we understand that? This means yes. Okay. Okay. Let, let's go back to, to Genesis 24. And in verse 6, Abraham said unto the servant, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The rock is smitten once. One time. And the Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred. Now, this is the seven separations of Abraham, really. And spake unto me that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angels before thee. And he's telling the servant, The angels are going to go before you and prepare the way. Verse 8, If the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, only bring not my son hither again. Well, I can't, I can't say that enough to where you understand that by the Spirit. It's time for the body of Christ to take responsibility for the work of grace that Jesus Christ did on the throne instead of sitting in the church having a good time. Verse 9, the servant put his hand under the thigh of the master, and again, that's obedience and under authority. And he said, and the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. How many of you know that all the goods of the master are in the hand of the fivefold ministry? Not one man of the fivefold ministry. Okay? I believe that one day they're going to all be in one hand because it's going to be a corporate body and we're going to be one. Right now we're not. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia and to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening when the time that the w women go out to draw water. Now, this servant knew where to go and what church to go to to find water. I mean, you, know, you can go to a lot of churches and not find water. You can go to a lot of wells and they're dried up. And I'm telling you that the... The well of Babylon is going to be dried up. If you don't believe it, read the last part of Revelation 18. There's nothing in it. There's no corn. There's no bread. There's no meal. There's all kinds of stuff that isn't in there. And, and I'd love to share that with you. But it's going to be because the water is going to be diverted. There's going to be no water in Babylon. And the people within Babylon are going to get so thirsty. And there's going to be a famine in Babylon. And they're going to come to where they can get food. Okay, now it was at evening. I maybe ought to look at my notes. It, I got a note that says it's good to find water in a time of darkness. That's when you really need water. It's when there's darkness. This was evening time. Verse 12, and he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham. Now, this, this servant was a, a man of prayer. That's good advice for the fivefold ministry. Men of prayer. Send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham, was his prayer. 
Behold, I stand here by the well of the water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel... Here's what he's saying in his prayer. He's saying, God, I want you to make it clear to me this woman whom I'm supposed to bring. And he says, Let the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down the pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast... Showed kindness unto my master. That's a pretty explicit prayer. Maybe we ought to be explicit when we pray and say, God, I'm not, I'm not one to, to talk about a fleece. I'm saying, God, show me directly what you want of me. And normally he'll do it through the word. And the reason a lot of people don't know God's will is they're not in God's word. If you want to, if you want to pray directly, then open the word and he'll give you a word directly from the word. Because he is the word. Verse 15, and it came to pass, listen to this, before it, <laughs> it came to pass before he had done speaking. You want a quick answer? Just ask. But be explicit and be in the word. Behold, Rebekah came out who was born to Bethuel. I need to show you who she is. Bethuel means, means man of God. He was a dweller in God. She's of good stock. The, the mother's name means, uh, the Milcha means queen. Okay? And she, Rebecca came out, Bethuel and Milcha, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. Her, her father is a brother of Abraham. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. Uh, Marion, what did you say that meant? captivating beauty. You couldn't take your eyes off of her. Now, folks, we're speaking about the church. Rachel is the church of grace. Leah was the church of law, if you remember, in the 12 gates. Rachel is the church of grace, and she's, she's beautiful to behold, very fair. Now, I know you can look at part of the church and it doesn't look very fair. Well, you just need to understand what happened to Sarah when she was 90 years old. She didn't look too good either. But God did a work on her, and the king desired her in his harem, right? So the church is going to be, how do you know some of us don't look too good right now? How do you know some of us looked a whole lot worse than we do right now? I look better than I've ever looked in my life. If you don't believe me, ask my wife. She knows me better than anybody. Very fair to look upon. She was a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down, <laughs> she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Now, now folks, this is important. This one that is going to be the bride, if you want to see if you're going to be a bride, you need to go down deep into the well. And you can go into, into 1 Corinthians chapter 1, where it talks about the natural mind. It, it compares a uh, gives differentiation, differentiation between the natural mind and the spiritual mind. And it says, the deep calls unto the deep to the deep things of God. And she went down deep in the well. Deep. There's stairs down into that well. You know what a stair is? A stair has a step where you step up either down lower or up higher. And if you want to get into deep things of God, you go down. If you want to get into spiritual things, you must come back up and go up higher. And a step is you step up higher into the heavenly things. It's a, it's a revelation of God. But then the next thing on the step is a tread. And you must walk that revelation out in your life or your revelation is in vain. If it doesn't, if it doesn't change your life, what good is a revelation? Because God want, wants a people that are quick to repent. David was a, God, a man after God's heart because he was quick to repent. Okay. And, and then it says, and she went down into the well, and guess what she did when she got down deep? She filled the pitcher. She come up full. And then she came up, and the servant, I find it interesting that the servant ran to meet her. I'd run to meet her too. I'd like to talk to her. Anybody that's been down deep in the well, I want to listen to you. I want some of your revelation. There's so much in the Word of God that I don't know. 
that, that I just, I desire to know him. I desire to see him as he is. You know why I want to see him as he is? The Bible says when I see him as he is, guess what happens? I become like him. When I see him as he is, I will be like him. And a servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of your pitcher. Oh, amen. I agree with that. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand. She was quick. Now listen, this bride, this woman is quick to give ministry to others. Are you a bride? Are you quick to minister? You know, ministry can be given a cup of cold water to a thirsty person. And gave him drink in verse 19. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. Now, she's not just going to water the fivefold ministry. And some of the fivefold ministry can be kind of unpleasant. But she's going to water the beasts. I mean, there are, there are many, many people in this caravan. This is a huge caravan. It, it carried all of the goods of the servant's master, a big caravan. And she watered all of these. How many of you know how much it water a camel drinks? She was the water carrier of the water carrier. She's full of water. When anybody has a need, has a hurt, she's got water for them. And she'll water them till they're full, till they're filled, right? Okay, and she drew for all his camels, verse 21, and the man wondering at her. Now, I'm telling you that it shows that that servant was a very patient man because I'd have said, come on, gal, you're going to my master, you know. But he still wondered at her. He was still concerned about there being some Canaanite blood in her. He didn't want to bring a Canaanite to his master's son, okay. And the man wondering at her, he held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. I don't know what he really wanted. He wants to see more. Boy, I tell you, anyone like that, I'd say, oh, please come into my congregation. <laughs> I'd love to have you, right? Verse 22, and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that a man took a golden earring. Now, this could probably better be rendered a jewel for the forehead. Now, after he's kind of contemplated this, he's really seen her. And he's going to take and he's going to put a mark in her forehead. A mark. How many of you know you need a mark in your forehead? How many of you know that the high priest on the mitre has said, Holiness unto the Lord? How many of you know you're going to be marked in your forehead? You know what that mark is? That's a spiritual mark. Uh, and and they can, you can do anything with the natural marks you want to. You have to ask theologians about that. I don't understand that. I'm not into natural. But this is a spiritual mark. It's the mind of Christ in your forehead. The mind of Christ in your forehead. The Bible talks so much. It says, let this mind be in you, which was all also in Christ Jesus. He said in Corinthians, but you have the mind of Christ. Okay, so there was a golden earring or, or a mark in the forehead. There were two bracelets. Bracelets in the Bible most times speak of betrothal. And so he's, he's, he's made up his mind, I'm going to betroth this woman to my master's son. She's it. And uh, it's bracelets for her hands. And then it goes on to verse 23. Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there any room in thy father's house for us to lodge? Well, being the great water carrier, she knows that there's always room in her father's house. How many of you know there's always room for one more in the father's house? The father's house is never full. You want in the father's house? Come on in. There is room for you. He says he'd have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And she said unto him, I am the daughter. And she repeats what she'd said before in verse 25. She said, More, moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. She's not only going to put him in, in housing, she's going to feed him. Going to feed him. Now, here's, here's a, 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 a sign of the fivefold ministry. The man bowed down his head to worship the Lord. He'll be a worshiper. You can tell him by looking at him, by watching him. Watch ministry. Watch ministry. How many of you know that ministry can discern you if they're around you very much? I can discern you. I can tell who you are by your fruit, by listening to your mouth, by what you do. 
How many of you know you can discern ministry? The body of Christ as a whole is not well enough informed to discern ministry. But you can discern ministry. You're well informed. Okay? And you need to. When you go out, you need to discern ministry. Verse 27, he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. Here's another condition for the fivefold ministry. I being in the way. How many of you know you've got to be in the way? How many of you know there's one way? How many of you know the street is narrow? It's not the broadways. Right? It's not the streets. There's one street. And that one street is straight. Acts calls it the straight. He said, go into either straight street or street straight. I can't remember which one. Straight street, I believe. I being in the way and the Lord led me. How many of you know he's led by the Spirit? It's good to be in the way. The way, it, the way is a highway, by the way. It talks about it in Isaiah. The highway. And there is such a highway that none of the animals can get up on it. it talks about that in Isaiah. Okay. But it's found, it's, you've got to be led by the Spirit to find the way. By the Spirit. He led me to the house of my master's brethren, and the damsel ran and told them. Well, listen, she's going to minister to her family. The, the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. Now, I did that, okay? Only it was my natural mother's house. I went to my brothers and my sisters and told them all the things that God had told me. Well, I wasn't too familiar with Joseph at that time, but I certainly understand him now. They said, who do you think you are? And I really wanted to tell them. They still don't hear, but they will hear. They're coming, folks. Those of your family are coming to the light. We, we see it in the Scripture. It, it's promise. Okay. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out into the man and under the well, still sending more of her family out to hear the man. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and the bracelet upon his sister's hands, he could tell. See, he had discernment, too. He was of that man of God house, his father. And when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Thus spake the Lord, thus spake the man unto me, and he came unto the man. And behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and she said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? I have prepared the house and the room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. How many of you know she not only washed his feet, all of those traveling with him, she washed there takes humility to wash a man's feet. And there was set meat before him to eat. Uh, and, and Lord, I, this really spoke to me when I first read it. And he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. Boy, you can judge a lot of pastors by how quick they run to the trough. Want to be first in line. I meddling, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. Take care of the spiritual things. The natural things will take care of themselves. He said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, and I thought of Brother Gwen. He's, he always says, and I said, speak on. I mean, no, that's scriptural. That's what it says right here. Speak on. That's what he said. And he, he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. He hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. He was a rich man, okay? And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him he giveth all that he hath. That means the master has given everything he has to the son. You know what happens when the son takes a bride? He gives everything he has to the bride. How many of you all know that, that are married? Everything you have is your wife. I see some separate banks account, bank accounts occasionally. and I mean, oh, I'll leave that alone. I don't need to go into that. <laughs> There's good information here for counseling young marriages. A lot of good information. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife. Boy, he repeats this over and over. You don't want a Canaanite woman. <laughs> don't take, I'm telling you, a Canaanite will not be a bride. 
If you got any Canaanite in you, you got to get it out. Verse 38, But thou shalt go into my father's house and to my kindred and take a wife unto my sign, my son. And I said to my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. He said unto me, The Lord before whom I spake will send his angel. He's repeating. That's good advice to the ministry. It's good advice to anybody. Because you're all ministers. How many of you know you're all ministers? The servant only spoke what the master had spoken. Boy, that's good. I mean, no, Jesus only spoke what he heard the Father speak. I mean, no, he only did what he saw the Father doing. And I'm a, verse 43, Behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh for the water, to draw water, I say to her, Give me a drink. And again, he's repeating all of this. I'm going on down. He's Verse 47, and verse 48, And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if ye will deal, deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me if not, tell me, that I may return, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Now, let me repeat that. And now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, he's saying, tell me, either yes or no that I may turn right or left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Humility a worshiper, and he was a humble man. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver. I mean, no silver speaks of redemption. Jewels of gold. Gold is the divine nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Raiment. Raiment is the righteousness of God by faith in Jesus Christ. It's the covering. It's going to be what transforms this old body. And he gave them to Rebekah, and he gave also to her brother and to her mother. She causes those around her to receive of her family. How do you know a righteous man will cause those around him to be blessed? You fathers, if you're righteous in your house, your wife and your children are blessed. You're blessed. If you're unrighteous, don't be. Verse 54, And they did eat and drink, he the men that were with him, and tarried all night, and they rose in the morning. Now, they rose in the morning because this is a new day now. Okay? This is a new day. And he said, send me away into my master. And when the new day comes, we're going to go to the master. Right? And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten. After that, she shall go. Now, your house will always try to keep you in bondage to them. Ten days means law. Ten is the number of law. It's also of testing and, and tribulation. And because they're so, it's such a tradition, they hated to see their daughter go. But they were smart. They says, we'll ask her. And he said unto them, hinder me not. I can't go back in to your tradition. I'm here to get a bride, and she's either going or I'm leaving. So... Don't tarry, folks, in the brideship. Because if you go into Matthew chapter 25 about the ten virgins, how many know half of them had the door shut and couldn't get in? How many know that? How many know they were virgins? How many know they were in the kingdom? How many know he's in the most holy place? And it takes the anointing, the oil that the five had, because some of five of them were clear in the outer court, Five of them were in the holy place, which is supposed to be the church. And it is the true church. It's the church of Rachel, the church of grace, that you need to find. And those are the five that went in. When the, there was another, there's a third fold there. The watchman said, and it was midnight, folks. He comes when it's as dark as it can be. And the minute he comes, it starts to get lighter. He said, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. 
Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Now, they had enough confidence in the daughter, and they saw the fruit of her life, that they said, she's spiritual enough to make a decision for herself. And that's always good to have parents that are, that are mature enough in the things of the Lord to let their children make spiritual decisions as long as they're in the right order. 58, and they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? What would she say? I'll go. I will go. Oh, that's good. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse. How many of you know she had a nurse? How many of you know her, knee, her nurse? And the nursing speaks of the breast, and Thessalonians speaks of two breasts. I better look them up. See what they are. I don't want to get them wrong. Verse 59. Faith. And love. It tells you in Thessalonians chapter 2 to put on the breastplate of faith and love. We need faith and love. Okay, let me get, let's look at it real quick. Now let's turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8. I'm doing so well, we're going to be early anyway. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be early. 1 <laughs> Thessalonians. Now, Glenn worries about me going too long all the time. Now he's thinking I'm going to quit early. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. But let us who are of the day. How many of you know you, you need to be of the day? Too many people are of the night. How many of you know that God. Well, let me put it this way. How many of you know that man starts in light and gets darker and darker and darker? How many of you know God starts man in darkness and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Do you all know that? Amen. See, because the reason that is, is when you go into the church, into the, into the holy place, the only thing in there is a candle. And you've been out here under the natural light of these great preachers and great orators with thousands in the, in the auditoriums. And it, it's really bright in there. But it's of a brightness of a natural mind. And it's, and it's good. I don't condemn that. Because there, there must be a 30-fold before there can be a 60-fold. And they have a place in the kingdom of God. But it's, but, but it's a man-pleaser out there. This is a place where Jesus is in the flesh, the outer court. But as soon as you take him into the holy place where he becomes the anointing of God, where he becomes Christ, the crowd diminishes. And then if you take him into the most holy place where he's got to be Lord of everything in your life, it really gets small. So, so when out there it's really bright and you come into this little church and there's just a candle. Well, hey, they're talking some spiritual things. I, I never heard this. And there are things hard to be understood, it says in Peter. Things hard to be understood. But it also says in Proverbs, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing and the honor of a king to search out a matter. And, and we're to search things out. Okay. Back to verse 8. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Faith and love. How do we know that the greatest of all is love? The greatest of all is love. Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians, right? And then it goes on. Okay, back into uh, Genesis 24. She took her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother. Now look, this bride is prepared to be a mother. She's prepared to be a mother. She's going to give birth to a man. She's going to give multiple births. And it's not going to be twins. I don't know how many it's going to be. Thousands. Thousands. It's going to be the corporate body of Christ. It's going to be the man-child company. That's going to be birthed out of the church of grace. She's going to be the... Well, here it tells you how many it's going to be. <laughs> She's going to be the mother of thousands of millions. Folks, that's a lot of kids. Thousands of millions. Whew. And let thy seed possess the gate of those which... I mean, she's going to possess the gate of her enemies. She's going to possess that gate. I mean, she's going to be judgment in the gate. 
We just studied the gates. She's going to be seated in the gates. And Rebecca arose. That's how you got to go if you're going to follow him. You got to arise and come away with me. Arise. More, more heavenly. The things of the spirit. Because see, the scripture is, you interpret scripture by scripture. You don't interpret scripture by man. Scripture by scripture. And her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. They followed the fivefold ministry, the servant. And the servant took Rebecca and went away. Now, what do you suppose he did? They got a long journey to go to the sun, right? What do you suppose he did on that journey? Now, I'll just tell you that there was ten camels, and the servant is riding one camel, and there were nine camels following. And on this nine camels, she's riding all nine of them, and they're the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, because she's going to be the bride of Christ. She's prepared, and she's adorned. And I can just imagine that all the way to the master's house, this servant who's been with this, this son from his birth, he's the oldest servant in the house. What do you suppose he's talking about? What does the Holy Spirit talk about? The son. All he's telling her is about the sun. Oh, you need to see the sun. You know how I know he was doing that? She knew him before she saw him. She knew him before she saw him. See, that's what the fivefold ministry is supposed to do. We're supposed to so prepare you that you'll know Jesus Christ before you meet him face to face. And I believe you will meet him face to face in the flesh. Uh, verse 62. And Isaac came from the way of the well, the Horai. It just means the well of living water, okay? I mean, that's where the sun came from. I mean, he is the well of living water. Remember when he sat on the well? He closed that dude off. <laughs> that natural well that she'd been drinking from. I think it was in John, isn't it? And, and he sat on it. He covered it. And he said, if you knew... Of the water that I have, you drink of me. That's what this son, this son is living. This is spiritual water. For he dwelled in the south country. How many know it's good to be in the south country? Let me just give you the directions. The north country is cold and it's trials and it's testing and it's tribulation. I mean, you know, the south is the blessings, the warmth, the sweet things of God. I mean, you know, the west is the old order. I mean, you know, the east is the new day. It's the rising of the sun in the Bible. Amen. 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 Okay. In verse 63, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac... She lighted off the camel. Now, you can define that any way you want to. I think she jumped off and ran to him. I mean, that's what we need to do. We need to get off the camels. We need to get off the beasts of burden and run to the sun. For she said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. Now, therefore, she took a veil. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. Why do you suppose she did that? There's two thoughts. I'll give you both of them. In, in her mind, maybe she's concerned about his brightness, that she can't stand to look upon him. The other thought is that she's so bright herself, and she hadn't really met him fully, and she was concerned that her brightness might drive him away. So how many of you know he took her in the house? And when he took her in the house and unveiled her, how many of you know she looked like him? How many of you know she had the same glory? How many of you know that the glory of the son had been given to the servant, and the glory of the servant had been given to the bride? Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Isn't that good? And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. 
Now, I'm telling you, this servant went into the master and he says, boy, you need to look at this bright. He says, I have brought you the right one. I know all about her. I've seen everything about her and her family. And so Isaac knew her. And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent. Now, how many know Sarah means princess? And he brought her in to the tent of the princess. And he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's. Folks, I'm looking for a people that wants to be prepared and adorned as a bride. But the scripture says, count the cost before you build the house, because if you put your hands to the plow and turn back, You're not fit for the kingdom. And there is a price to pay. You know what it's going to cost you? Everything. It's going to cost you everything. This has to do with the mark of the beast. And I've just got just a few minutes, so I'm just going to take about five more minutes. The mark of the beast talks about buying and selling. And Jesus really explains it in the Gospels. And he says, buy a sword and sell your garment. And he goes on to, I could take you to Luke and show you that the garment is a covering for sin. Now, you buy this sword and the sword is without money. You can't buy it with money. But you're going to pay the price for the sword. But then not only do you have to buy, you've got to sell. And there are many people that say, I don't want to know because if I know, I'm responsible. And that's true. And you can sit in the outer court and have no knowledge and not be accountable for that, for having, because you have no knowledge. But how many of you know you can't go in where he is? You can't. And so you need to choose whether you really want to see him or not. All I can tell you is he's worth seeing. And I've just had a glimpse. For you see him line upon line, precept upon precept. And every time I open his word, I opened the word for a couple hours this morning. How do you know I saw him a little better than I did before I started? I just encourage you to open the word and make a decision. He says, choose you this day. And you have the choice. Choose life. And he is the only life. Or you can choose death. Now, there are those that say, well, I want to follow him because I'm not under the law. Well, that's not true. Because, see, there's two laws. There's two laws. How many know that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is a law? It's a spiritual law. And it's a law. There's no, it's not something that you can work around or detour from. It's an absolute law in the spiritual kingdom of God. And God made it. And it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But it will set you free from the law of sin and death. And it's the only thing that can set you free from it. Father, I just thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for this people. Father, it's a privilege and a pleasure to minister truth to your body. And I thank you for them. I bless them. I thank you, Father, that you've opened eyes this morning because you've opened ears. Now, Father, I just ask you to open their heart that this will not be my knowledge or of the soul, but, Father, it will be planted in the heart of the Spirit. And that, Father, it will dwell there and it will come forth as necessary and when called upon by those that have received it. And it will bring life to others that they come in contact, and they will become preservers of life in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.